Curry, Mr. Bejeron's on. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. That answer that question? Uh, yes, sir. If you left him in trust, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, as long as the assets are left in trust for Mary and not there. just to Mary. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. You're doing great stuff. Right. Thank you. Just great and stuff. I'm writing a paper for the health task force on the status of health care on Martha's Vineyard. <clears throat> and uh, there are a number of issues that need clarification. I'm going to ask everybody in the panel about it. First, I'm just going to give myself a plug. Uh, I'm starting a practice, a social work counseling practice specializing in the aging. Um, it will be based on ability to pay for the fees, and uh, I can do evaluation of the degree of dementia. Uh, I know many of the resources on the island and off the island. I've been a healthcare administrator for a long time. Housing uh, for the for seniors and impa- physically impaired adults. Uh, but aside from that, my my question to you is: uh, a lot of the health care on the island is piecemeal, and one of the things my research has shown is there's very little adaptability from each program in terms of coordinating the amounts of money that the programs get, putting it together into, which is very unusual for this island because we have five towns, five different of everything. But are there some areas where we could uh, not duplicate services but pool them are there areas where you think we might be able to do mass purchasing of supplies, mass purchasing of things like wheelchairs, uh, respir- uh, respiratory uh, care uh, on wheelchairs, even pooling the supply by sending students on the island, high school graduates, etc to school to learn how to be nursing aides and LPNs, RNs, etc. So I guess the, so broadly the question is whether, whether despite the fact that there are this whole, that, that, that funding for all these programs is coming from a variety of different pots, there would be a better way or an improved way to coordinate the spending from those programs so as to increase the availability of equipment to increase the availability of training for, for, staff, for staff who are really providing all this home care for a variety of things. Comments from anybody on that, any of that? Um, I, I don't know, I'm from out of town. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that in reality, um, one of the dilemmas we all have is that our, the funding that we are using is itself categorical um, and is, uh, for, for example, social service funding and housing funding is, is separate from health care funding. Um, I think that is something that, as, as a nation, we, we need to look at. Um, locally, I think the, the Health and Aging Task Force, uh, by being such a mixed group, is, is uh, working in the direction of fostering the cooper- greater cooperation um, between of the various resources here. I think what sometimes gets lost is the current cooperation. Uh, as, you, as you heard Leslie uh, just talk about the Supportive Day. Supportive Day is a perfect example of a program that actually involves the cooperation of, of all of the six towns, uh, their councils on aging. Uh, we at Elder Services uh, are, are involved. Uh, at various times, you've used the resources of the Alzheimer's <coughs> Association, the the uh, nursing agencies here, as well as uh, Windermere. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, I think that uh, as far as an openness to co- cooperative efforts, uh, Islanders are, are pretty uh, good at, at, at being open. At being, yeah. And um, I do think that the future is going to uh, not only 
encourage us, but allow us to uh, collaborate more, more freely uh, than we can right now. Leslie or Sandy? I just, uh, you know, uh, and Abe, you're on the Healthy Aging Task Force. I, I am as well, and I know Jackie's involved. You know, most people that I know that are involved in elder care on the island are also involved in that task force, and at varying at varying committees or whatever. And I think that it's um, it's the very best, most current effort that is being made for to do just what you're uh, kind of talking about to coordinate and better. Um, bring together different agencies and different, um, you know, a aspects of, of um, elder care uh, to work more cooperatively. As Jackie says, we do work very cooperatively. There's certainly room for more, um, and I think that the Healthy Aging Task Force is the best effort that we have at this point um, to move in that direction. So. Sandy? Yeah. And I also am on a couple of the committees of the Healthy Aging Task Force, and I think it's in a very exciting time to see all of us coming together and, um, and working together in a way that I also haven't seen in the past 20 years, so it's very exciting. As far as the education piece goes, um, this year we started at the high school with the CNA program, as some of you may know. And that's a program that, C um, CNA. which is certified nursing assistant. So it's under the vocational program of the high school. And that's one of the things that we've been working on for a very long time is so that we can educate some of our own, whether they're going, the, the students are going to graduate and go on to physical therapy or nursing or even being a physician. Or if they aren't planning on going on, they will come out of the high school with a certificate as a nurse's aide. And that'll be hugely helpful in the staffing shortage for the home care agencies, the programs that uh, Jackie purchases services from, Windermere. Um, the other things that are going on is Cape Cod Community College through a, um, a program that many of us sit on the committee of is also now working with the LPNs on the island to bring a lot of the education programs to the island in their own backyard um, so they can go from an RN to, I mean from an LPN to an RN and also many of the programs that the um, RN students need are now being offered here on the island. So young moms who find it very difficult to travel over to four C's um, can start, at least get started with some of that now. So actually, I, I love your question, and I do believe that it's a really exciting time that we're finally seeing an awful lot of this come together, and we'll all be pushing it to keep the momentum that it's got going. And I can tell you as a wash ashore, um, I do a lot of this kind of work in a lot of places. You are so cutting edge here. It is incredible in terms of watching this, this co consciously trying to figure out how to deal with all of us baby boomers, right, shifting into older ages, how to deal with is a coordinated way, in a coordinated way with all of these issues. It is simply amazing. That's one of the reasons why I love dealing with all these folks, is just watching what could be a state model or a national model kind of developing on its own. With just a hand, you know, with, you know, and how many people live here full time? 17,000, 18,000? It is unbelievable. Unbelievable what you're doing. Unbelievable. Uh, other questions? Yes, sir, and then you, ma'am. Yes, sir. Well, well, I'm sure you can talk about it for an hour. We shouldn't Which lose we did. <laughs> <laughs> we shouldn't lose, uh, lose the, the potential for considering long-term care insurance to assist with all of the substantial expenses of Alzheimer's treatment. It's there. It needs to be purchased. It's too it expensive. It be forgotten when we consider all of the expenses that might be available. The, the, uh, the point is well taken. You, you, you're commenting on the fact that we, as part of all of this mix, we really want to be thinking about the effect of long-term care insurance. And I guess what I, what I tell clients from my perspective is, it is long-term care insurance, ironically to me, is much more important if you want to stay home than if you want to go to the nursing home. Because if you want to go to the nursing home, the cost of that long-term care insurance policy is tremendous and for the, for, the, for, the given, if, for the level of benefit that you need in order to really kind of save yourself. But, but to be able to provide those extra assets or the extra care at home, because most of these long-term care insurance policies will allow you to use that benefit at home, it's tremendous in terms of the health that it, it provides. But I think the point is very well taken, and it's something we hadn't talked about. There's a question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, if I were to move my mother from Connecticut to Massachusetts, is there a waiting period before she's eligible for the elder 
uh, uh, services or the supportive daycare program here on the island. The question is, if you move your mother to Massachusetts, is there a waiting period in terms of her qualifying for the Massachusetts services? Yes, a day, one day. Um, and, and if she's coming from Connecticut, that's probably a good idea. The, 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 mass, the, the qualification rules in Connecticut are much more stringent than they are in Massachusetts. Uh, and you can literally, by, she can move here and declare her residency here that day and the next day she can qualify. And, all, and by the way, in general, I know this is a very important question on the island, when people are thinking about this in terms of their, their own parents, you've got a lot of folks that, you know, people live one place and the kids are over here. You, your plan needs to be around where you think you're going, where you think that older person is going to end up, what state they're going to get end up in, because all the planning rules that I was just talking about are all rules that apply if Mary is ending up in Massachusetts, right? But if she's ending up with her daughter in any place, New, you know, if it's New Hampshire, forget none of this applies, right? New Jersey, Florida, completely different, or not completely, but very, very different systems. So the goal always has to be to think about what's the final destination going to be. Uh, any other questions? And then I want to close. Yes. How does she declare her residency? She can just she can just do it uh, when when she's filing the the uh, Mass Health application, right? Uh, one of the things that she can, she can do there is to just say that she is a resident. And if she's incapable of doing that, her attorney, if she's got a power of attorney, her attorney can do that on her behalf. If there are no other questions. Thank you very much. Can I ask for a round of applause for this great piano? <laughs> That is doing great stuff. Um, thank you very much, and we'll see you next time. I think I'm back in November. Thank you. November 17th. November 17th, I'm told.